day, cute angels! Welcome to a new learning episode. I am Teacher Nancy, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your self-learning module, your pen, and paper to write your answers as we progress with our discussion. And most importantly, look for a place in your home where you feel safe and comfortable. Please be reminded that you may comment or ask questions at the comment section. In this lesson, we are expected to describe a mathematical system and illustrate the need for an axiomatic structure of a mathematical system in general and in geometry in particular, the defined terms, the undefined terms, postulates, and the theorems. Let us start our third quarter lesson with the mathematical system. A mathematical system in general is a logical study of shape, arrangement, and quantity. Algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and calculus are examples of mathematical systems. Geometry is a logical mathematical study of points, lines, planes, and solids, their properties, measurement, and relationship to each other in space. The mathematical system is composed of the undefined terms, the defined terms, axioms or postulates, and theorems. Let us first unlock the undefined terms. In mathematical system, it may come across many terms which cannot be precisely defined. Undefined terms are terms that are left undefined in the system Instead of providing a definition for them, we resort to a description, illustration, or demonstration. In geometry, there are three terms that we do not try to define. These are point, line, and the plane. Again, the three undefined terms in geometry are point, line, and the plane. They are usually readily understood but are not formally explained using basic words since they will lead to circularity. It means that you have just circled back to any word previously being defined or to the original word. The undefined terms are point, line, and plane. A point shows the exact location. A line is a set of points extending toward two opposite directions without end. And a plane is a flat surface extending towards all directions without end. Let us illustrate these three undefined terms to better understand them. First, a point, it is represented by a dot. It has no length, no width, and no thickness. To name a point, use a capital letter as in point A. For our illustration, we have point A, point B, point C, point D, and point E. Next, we have the line. A line is described as an infinite set of points. It is a straight line extended infinitely in both directions. It has length but has no thickness and has no width. To name a line, use two capital letters as in line EB or with a line symbol above BE or a single lowercase letter as in line A. For our illustration, we have line EB line LB, line A, and line F. While a plane is a flat two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely far in all directions, it has length and width but has no thickness. There are two ways to label planes. Most frequently, we use three or four of the points that are in the plane as the name. Remember that points are indicated with a dot and are labeled with a capital letter. The second way to name a plane is with just one capital letter that is written in the corner of the image of the plane. This letter does not have a dot next to it and is sometimes written in a script font that is different from the font used for points. The first plane in our illustration can be named as follows. It can be named as plane ABC plane ABD, plane BCD, plane ACD, or plane ABCD. And the second plane can be named as plane A. Let us proceed to the second part of the mathematical system, the defined terms. 
Definitions or defined terms are terms defined from the undefined terms in the system. So in geometry, the defined terms are terms defined from the point, line, and plane. Let us have some examples of defined terms in geometry. Number one, we have the collinear points. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. So for our example, we have point G, H, and J. Point G, H, and J are collinear since they lie on line A. As you can see in our illustration, we have line A, point G, point H, point J. Again, point G, H, and J are collinear since they lie on line A. Number two, we have the coplanar points. The definition of coplanar points or lines, these are points or lines that lie on the same plane. Based on the illustration, line ZT and line PQ, point R and point S are coplanar since they lie on the same plane. Again, line ZT and line PQ, point R and point S are coplanar since they lie on the same plane. While line A and point Y are non-coplanar. Again, the coplanar points or lines, these are points or lines that lie on the same plane. And line A and point Y are outside the plane R. So it means line A and point Y are non-coplanar points. Again, the coplanar points, these are the points or lines that lie on the same plane. For number three, we have line segment. A segment designates a portion of a line that has two endpoints. Segments are named by their endpoints. From the illustration given, from line GJ, we will have line segment GH, line segment HJ, and line segment GJ. As you can see, the symbol above the name of line GJ has two arrow heads, while the symbol above the names of the segments GH, HJ, and GJ does not have arrow heads. That means the given name is a line segment or a segment. Number four, we have the definition of ray. A ray is a portion of a line that has only one endpoint and extends infinitely in the other direction. Rays are named by their endpoints and another point on the line. The endpoint always comes first in the name of a ray. From line GJ, we will have ray GJ, ray HG, and ray HJ. And for number 5, we have the point of intersection. The definition of point of intersection is it is the point or set of points where lines planes, segments, or rays cross each other. For our illustration, we have the point of intersection of ray GJ and ray HJ is point J, while the point of intersection of line AC and line DE is point X. These are just few of the many terms that we need to learn in geometry. We are now on the third part of our lesson, the postulates. Postulates are statements that are considered true without proof. Early Greek considered postulates as general truths, common to all studies and axioms as the truths relating to the special study at hand. Geometric concepts are interrelated to understand axiomatic development of geometric concepts. It is important to know that some statements are considered true even without proof. Again, there are statements in geometry that are considered true even without proof. These are the postulates. Again, the postulates are statements that are considered true even without proof. The following postulates describe the basic relationships among points, lines, and planes. First, the line postulate. The line postulate states that there is exactly one line through 
any two points A and B. Next, we have the plane postulate which states that there's exactly one plane that contains any three non-collinear points. And if the two coplanar points form a line, that line is also within the same plane. Let's move on to the next postulate, the plane line postulate. It states that a line connecting points in a plane also lies within the plane. Next, we have the line intersection postulate. The line intersection postulate states that if two distinct lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. For our illustration, the point of intersection of line BZ and line TC is point R. And lastly, we have the plane intersection postulate, which states that the intersection of two planes is a line. For our illustration, we have plane S and plane T. The intersection of plane S and plane T is line L. Let us now move on to the fourth part of the mathematical system, the theorems. Theorems are statements that follows logically from previous definitions and principles. Theorems are statements that can be proved to be true. These are statements proved to be true using postulates, definitions, other established theorems, and logic. The difference between postulates and theorems is that postulates are statements that are considered true without proof. These are statements that are accepted as true even without proof. While the theorem is a statement in mathematics or logic, that can be proved to be true by reasoning or by using postulates, definitions, other established theorems, and logic. Here are some theorems used in geometry. First, we have the linear pair theorem. The linear pair theorem states that if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. In our illustration, we have angle ABD and angle CBD. Angle ABD and angle CBD are linear pair. From this theorem, the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle CBD is equal to 180 degrees. Next, we have the vertical angles theorem. The vertical angles theorem states that vertical angles are congruent. It means that angles opposite each other and formed by two intersecting straight lines are congruent. For the illustration shown on your screen, we have two pairs of vertical angles. We have angle 1 and angle 3, angle 2, and angle 4. Next, the exterior angle theorem. The exterior angle theorem states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measure of the two remote interior angles of the triangle. This theorem will be discussed in detail on a different episode. And lastly, we have the isosceles triangle theorem. It states that the base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent. We have the base angles angle A and angle B. This list is not yet complete since there are still other definitions, postulates, and theorems in the succeeding lessons. Let us now see what you have learned. Are you ready? Again, you may type your answers on the comment section. Kindly type your name, section, and school with your answers. Let us begin. Number 1. This part of the mathematical system includes the points, lines, and planes. M. Undefined terms. A. Defined terms. T. Postulates. H. Theorems. You have 10 seconds to answer. Number 2. These are statements that can be proved to be true. M. Undefined terms. A. Defined terms. T. Postulates. H. Theorems. For number 3, it is described as a flat two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely far in all directions. It has length and width but has no thickness. M. Point. 
A line, D plane, H ray. For question number four, these are statements that are considered true without proof. M undefined terms, A defined terms, T postulates, H theorems. For question number five, identify the postulate. A line connecting points in a plane also lies within the plane. M line postulate, A plane line postulate, T plane postulate, H plane intersection postulate. For question number six, again identify the given postulate. If two distinct lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. M line postulate, A plane line postulate, T line intersection postulate, H plane intersection postulate. Wow, you're doing great! Let's proceed to question number 7. It is a portion of a line that has only one endpoint and extends infinitely in the other direction. M ray, A line, T segment, H point. Let's move on to question number eight. These are points that lie on the same line. M collinear points, A coplanar points, T line segment, H point of intersection. And we are almost done. Question number 9. These are points that lie on the same plane. M. Collinear points. A. Coplanar points. T. Line segment. H. Point of intersection. And finally, for question number 10, it is the point or set of points where lines, planes, segments, or rays cross each other. M. Collinear points. A. Coplanar points. T. Line segment. H. Point of intersection. That was excellent! Congratulations grade 8 learners! For your assignment, answer drills number 2 and number 4 on page 3 and 4 from your instructional support. Well, that is all for now. I hope you learned a lot today. Again, this is teacher Nancy Pineda, your teacher for grade 8 mathematics. Until next time, have a nice day and God bless us all!